Hi, my name is Joanna Yu, and I'm going to talk about rubber bullet injuries and how to provide basic wound care. But before I begin, I want to give you some background on rubber bullets, what they are, what kind of damage they can inflict, and what to do when you come across someone who has been hit by one or several. Rubber bullets can be solid, spherical, or cylindrical. They can come in a range of sizes and can be fired as single shots or in groups of multiple projectiles. Sometimes they're made of plastic or PVC instead of rubber, or even a composite that includes metal. Even though rubber bullets are deemed as less lethal compared to guns, they can still be deadly and inflict damage to the areas they're shot at. Officers are trained to fire downward and from a distance to avoid the face and aim at extremities such as arms and legs. However, on this slide, you can see that this does not always happen. Most commonly, rubber bullets can cause contusions and swelling. However, their abilities to inflict blunt trauma have been known to cause permanent disabilities, fractures, eye injury, and compromised vision, in some cases requiring removal of eyes due to the rupture, internal bleeding, and organ damage, such as intracranial hemorrhage. This is my patron here. Um, as you can see, he's got some bleeding here that was inflicted by a rubber bullet. So just by assessing this side, it looks about uh, two and a half inches to three. So I do want to make sure that the dressings that I provide are going to cover this site. But first off, you know, I just want to check his orientation and you know, as I'm talking to him since he's got a head wound here, I'm going to apply pressure to the site to make sure I stabilize the bleeding. And so while I'm waiting for the bleeding to stop, I do want to note that if you notice any muscle, bone, or fatty tissue uh, being exposed, or if you provide stabilization to the bleeding and it doesn't stop and the edges are still open or demarcated, um, and also if the site you know, of injury is on the head, neck, or torso area, those are immediate referrals to the ED after you're stabilizing the wound and providing your basic wound care because those can be life-threatening injuries. All right, so after about 30 seconds or so, I'd like to check on the wound and great, it looks like the bleeding has stopped. So now I'm going to provide some irrigation just to clean the area. I'm just going to pretend that I'm going to open this, but in reality, I'm going to open the, the saline and I'm just going to irrigate it, depending on how big the wound is, or I can grab some gauze and pour some on here and make sure I clean the wound to prevent infection. Okay, all right, and then I'm going to grab some gauze, some clean gauze, and I'm going to cover the wound, which was uh, two and a half by three inches. So make sure that's covered, and I'm going to grab some tape. And just make sure that I cover all the edges appropriately. Didn't want to get in his eyes, but as you can see, there we go. And then now we can send him on his way to ED. All right, thank you.